Hey, Gemma Gilbert here. I want to talk to you about the structure that you may choose for your group program. And there are essentially two core options here. Now, the options are um, we run our program as a cohort. This is sort of the more widely understood model um, where you have a defined start and stop to your program. Um, everybody starts at the same time. They go through the same experience together. Then the other option we have is to run your program evergreen. Um, running your program evergreen essentially means people can join at different stages. I like to speak about this in terms of rolling enrollment. I kind of enroll, uh, enroll people on a monthly basis um, every single month. So it sort of rolls on and on and on. Um, now, um, a lot of people choose cohort because that's kind of the done thing. That seems kind of easy to get our heads around. Okay, I have this group of people join um, and they follow this pathway. Now, I'm really aware that all of my marketing says the opposite. All of my marketing says, here's why I use Evergreen. Here's why I choose rolling enrollment. Um, so the first thing I, I just want to say and make really clear is there isn't a right and wrong. There isn't a better way or a worse way. Um, and there are compelling reasons on both sides for why you might choose a cohort start stop program versus an evergreen rolling program. So when I talk here, I'm very much talking from my experience of what I experienced over like two to three years of running cohort programs and essentially why I eventually decided that model wasn't um, the one I wanted to scale with. Um, because you know that one was, it was good to test out some different group programs, but ultimately when I was really focused on, you know, what does growth look like and, and how do I make my business sustainable and how do I create recurring revenue? Um, for me, like the easy, easy decision fell to an evergreen format. Now, what I find with the evergreen format is there are a lot of misconceptions, there's a lot of myths, there's a lot of kind of uh, misunderstandings around how it actually works and like how you have a program um, that kind of people can join anytime. And I find the main place people get stuck um, when they're thinking about this is they get stuck on the content and the fact that it's a linear journey and they think like, well, I need to take people on a linear journey so they can't join every time because they would have missed module one if they join at this time. Um, what I want to say to you about that is um, this is what you think is the issue, but actually um, I've never worked with a client that we haven't come up with an awesome evergreen format for them uh, because there are ways to do it, right, in an evergreen way. And, and yes, you have to change the structure and yes, you 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 implement things in a different way, but that's not that's not the thing you get hung up on, right? That doesn't matter. You just choose a different structure that works in an evergreen format and that's a solvable problem. Um, so I wanted to share with you the tension points I found with the cohort model um, and why I, I moved to the evergreen um, rolling model. And I'm running a workshop on this next week, which goes into a lot more detail around this. So um, just just put the like a comment, the word rolling, if you want me to get you the details of that workshop, we're diving into exactly how it works and how you might want to implement this. Um, but I did want to say there's no right or wrong, but you do need to understand the reasons like pros and cons for both and make the decision. So the reason the, um, the cohort model started to kind of bring up these tension points for me um, is because I would have, it was an intense year packed with like program break, program break, program break. So I had this intense period where I was suddenly enrolling these clients for like 12 to 15 clients onto a program. This intense program was 12 weeks long, it was focused, it was deep, it was two sessions a week, I delivered it. The program finished, had a, had a, a like a school holiday break, and then immediately I was enrolling for the next one. So if you imagine like the momentum was like enroll, deliver, enroll, deliver, enroll, deliver. And from a kind of delivery perspective, but also a sales perspective, it was quite full on. Um, and all of my business kind of success was dependent on me getting the number of clients I wanted um, for the next cohort. So like do a launch, enroll people, do a launch, enroll people. Um, so I felt kind of trapped in these cycles. And if I didn't go through one of the cycles, I didn't make the money from the group program that I needed to sustain um, my business. Um, I didn't like that I had these really high income months and these really low income months. Um, like when I launched the program, I got all this money and then people had kind of paid and then I didn't have any money for the next few months. And then one of the biggest bugbears for me was that I just had nothing to offer leads. I had nothing to give to leads um, who approached me when the program had started. So they would come in month two and be like, oh, I really need your help. And I'd say, oh, great. Um, my program starts again in four months. And they're like, no, I need your help now. Well, I've got nothing to offer you. And I would watch them go and buy from other people. Um, so kind of as I was growing and going through these cycles, and I just eventually got to this tension point where I thought this 
this doesn't make good business sense. Like I've got nothing to sell to these people that want to buy from me. And I'm caught in these like high pressure launch cycles and then these intense delivery periods. And it's all reliant on me just keeping going. And if I ever stop, if I ever take my foot off the gas, like I don't have the income from this group program, which was like 90% of my business at that point, right? Um, so it didn't feel sustainable to me. It didn't feel like something I could grow with without just making the launches bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, I, would, I would still have these kind of serving people and then nothing and then serving people and then nothing. And that led me to really start to explore a different model um, and look at how evergreen programs work with the idea being that you have a program that's always running. So you build up the security of recurring revenue from people in the program over a period of time. And all you're doing every month is enrolling three to five clients a month into that program, you know, whatever that number is for you, it can be higher, it can be lower, um, into that program for you. And it felt like when I kind of really understood how it worked, the answer to all of my problems, because now I just have the focus on one thing, um, slow enrollment every single month, my income's always going up because I'm always enrolling new people, um, and I just have utter focus on, on growing this one program. So if you're making this decision right now, um, and you're thinking, well, what would a different model look like? Like, how does Evergreen even work? How do you enroll people month on month? Like, how does that work with the content? And how do you actually get the number of clients you want uh, each month? And just kind of all of those questions coming into mind, that is what my workshop next week is on, right? We're diving into um, the Evergreen format, what rolling enrollment looks like. I'm going to give you everything you need um, to uh, learn about the cohort versus rolling model, um, to learn around how you enroll leads without launching, and then really importantly, how you give people an incredible kickoff when they join your program, because your program kind of already underway. Um, so how, how they join powerfully um, and get and get results and make awesome progress in an evergreen format. So if you're curious to come learn about this, um, just comment below with the word rolling. Um, I will get the, the details to you. It's happening next Wednesday, the 21st, uh, 11.30 to 1.00. Um, I am doing a 24 hour replay this time because I changed the date. It was originally on Monday when the Queen's funeral is. Um, it's now on Wednesday. So if you'd like to come, pop the word rolling underneath. I'll get the details to you. And I hope to see you there. See you later.